All right, we got another super chat. <clears throat> Excuse me. That's a tough one. Coming in for five dollars. Daniel Dean super chats. What are your thoughts on reparations for descendants of African slaves? Is there a libertarian argument in favor of them? That's a great question, Daniel. And reparations have come up uh, a lot recently in regards to the George Floyd protests and riots reinvigorating the Black Lives Movement and calling attention to racial issues in America across the board. And this is a tricky issue, not because it's a tricky issue ethically or for libertarians, but it's, or morally, if you're an ethical libertarian, uh, untangling the ethics of this is, is very simple, very easy, right? Uh, if you wrong somebody, you have a obligation to make them whole. Uh, if, if someone is, for victims to be made whole is the only way that justice is achieved. What's tricky here is who are the victims, who are the perpetrators, and what would it mean to be made whole? So when you say, well, we, you know, white Americans were responsible for slavery, therefore white Americans today should pay reparations to black Americans. No, absolutely not. No justification for that whatsoever. However, little caveat, how, how close to that could be justified as policy? Could government, as an institution that has been enriched from taxes collected from slave owners, from the system of slavery itself as an institution that does have, direct, I mean, because you can't say the federal government of the United States of America as a continuous corporate entity going back to the age of slavery does bear some responsibility for the institution of slavery in America. Without, you know, a lot of this is more local governments than federal, but of course, federal law and everything else as well. You know, the Runaway Slave Act, if it wasn't for the ability to catch runaway slaves and use government to do it, you know, have government protecting the property of people for whom slaves are property, you wouldn't really have the institution of slavery as it is. So would it be appropriate for the federal government only? Now, here's where it gets complicated. We go, well, I don't know if the federal government does it, then that's coming from the American taxpayer. Well, if you're looking at the uh, accumulated wealth of the federal government, some of it could, could be said to have come from taxpayers who owned slaves in the past. Now, can you untangle the knot? There, there's so many fungible pools of money involved here. Could you really say, well, that that went to, and so I, in a sense, you could, you could make the libertarian case for reparations to descendants of slaves from the federal government using tax dollars or material property gained from slave owners or the institution of slavery. And then you could say there's a direct responsibility that is inheritable or that could be said to have transferred from generations where the federal government, you know, a white slave owner who has a son or a daughter, that son or daughter, those kids, if they do not deliberately in any way contribute to that institution of slavery, they can't be guilty from it. Now, if they profit from it indirectly, someone has profit from it, you know, you can say that's stolen, that should be returned. If you can untangle that not directly, like, for example, if I can say my great, 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 great grandfather was a plantation owner and we have this inheritance that we have passed on from generation to generation and it's here and I can identify that this wealth that, that I now personally have was illegitimately acquired. And if I can find its rightful owners, if I can trace, you know, if they're descent, I can say that like, yeah, I can, there's that continuity I don't have the responsibility to do that. I'm not the criminal in this case, but the federal government has a con continuity of existence from the days of slavery to today that you can say is a continuity of responsibility, which would mean that they have to find a victim and, and make them whole. Now, here's the next thing. What is that victimhood? Now, I am not in any way disputing that blacks are, black Americans are just uniquely victims of government and society in general in the United States today. Absolutely. 
Who's responsible for that victimization at this point? Well, we can hold individual account or uh, individual actors like violent cops accountable. And we can, uh, you know, change, we can look at the government institutions that you know, engage in systemic racism or, or things like that. But when you, when you get to that point, you look at the modern black American, you go, yeah, they've been disadvantaged a lot, but so has every poor American. We've all been ripped off. We've all been stolen from. And so what strikes me as a better concept of reparations is exactly what I propose in dissolving the federal government, dissolving all governments down to the voluntary uh, community level of government or you know, individual sovereignty level. So if we do this, do we want to try to untangle the knot based on skin color, based on heritage? I certainly think that Black Americans are uniquely disadvantaged today as part of the heritage, uh, the legacy of, of racism and slavery in America. I support the federal government itself and, and state governments that are sitting on massive piles of wealth that have been stolen from everybody, using part of that if they practically can to give up that power and give up that wealth, give it up to people that they can identify as disadvantaged victims. And I think if they want to start with Black people, Black Americans, and there's a process of going, well, we're using wealth that was gained illegitimately and we're compensating people to make them whole. You know, I I think I could support that. What what would it, you know, I, there are things I'd rather, I'm not like actively supporting that. I don't think that's, I think the best thing, again, like I said, with localization is reparations for everybody across the board. We don't need to say you're a special class, you're a special class, you're disadvantaged. Like, and what, you know, what do you say to a, a descendant of slaves who is now rich? You know, like, how do you untangle this knot when you, when you look at an individual and you say, well, you're a black person. You were born into poverty when you should have been born into economic comfort. That would have been, you know, where you would have been fairly without the disadvantages of, of racism and slavery. Do we provide that? But, you know, but then since then you, you, you became a successful entrepreneur or criminal and now you're, you're rich in, 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 at age 40, you know, do I need to give you 40 acres and a mule and figure out a government program to get that to you? I'm more worried about the black Americans who are still suffering in poverty. And when you look at it that way, you go, well, it's all minorities. Why would you separate black people? Not look at Arab Americans or Mexican Americans or Asian Americans. You know, why would you make it about race? And I think you would have to come up with an objective program. I really, in order for me to support it, it would have to be objective. And you could say, well, the legacy of slavery, if black people are disadvantaged and, and we're, we're going to include that as one way that we look at, you know, how we get rid of this pool of money from government. Okay, but it would really have to be overall colorblind and take advantage or take into into consideration the fact that there are you know, larger the larger group today of poor Americans are ones who have been ripped off by the system and by government and are in, you know deserving of their share of the liquidating assets of the federal government as much as anybody else. <laughs>